On April 8, 1974, Hank Aaron broke one of baseball's most hallowed records when he hit his 715th career home run, surpassing the legendary Babe Ruth. In today's video, we'll take a look back at how the record was broken and the unprecedented pressure that Hank Aaron overcame in becoming baseball's career home run king. Before we get started, I just want to say welcome to All Sports History. This is a channel where you'll find many sports documentaries on sports leagues like the NFL, NBA, MLB, NHL, and much more. So please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell if you don't want to miss any of those. Okay, let's get back to today's video. Well before Hank Aaron ever played his first major league game, a pitcher turned outfielder named Babe Ruth was hitting home runs at a pace that no one had ever seen. Ruth was the first ever player to hit over 50 home runs in a season, which he did in 1920, and then he became the first ever to hit 60 home runs in a season, which he did in 1927. Ruth's dominance would eventually culminate in him becoming the career home run king, hitting 714 home runs all time, easily crushing the previous record of 138 home runs set by Roger Connor in 1897. But flashing forward some years, a young man named Henry Aaron, or Hank as most called him, got his start in playing professional baseball in 1951 when he was signed by the Indianapolis Clowns, <laughs> a team who played in the Negro Baseball League. His excellent play led to him being quickly discovered by major league teams. The New York Giants and Milwaukee Braves both offered him contracts, but the Braves offered to pay Aaron $50 more per month. Naturally, Aaron signed with the Braves, leaving many to wonder what might have been had he become teammates with Willie Mays in New York. Aaron, at the age of 20 years old, would go on to make the team in 1954, making his first MLB start on April 13, 1954 in a game against the Cincinnati Reds. In his first season, he hit just 13 home runs, but he quickly began to hit over 25 home runs per season after that. By 1957, he hit 44 in one season, reaching 100 career home runs on August 15th, and he would continue to hit 100 home runs roughly every three years after that, reaching 200 career home runs on July 3, 1960. He hit his 300th on April 19, 1963. He reached 400 on April 20, 1966. He hit his 500th on July 14, 1968. 600 on April 27, 1971, and got to 700 career home runs on July 21, 1973. By this point, Hank Aaron was only 14 home runs away from tying Babe Ruth's career home run record of 714 career home runs. For the remainder of the year, there was a big question hanging over Hank Aaron of whether or not he could break the record before the end of the 1973 season. On September 29th, Aaron hit his 713th home run with one day left in the season. Many thought that he could tie the record on the last game, but Aaron failed to hit a home run the next day in a game against the Houston Astros. Hank Aaron said afterwards that his only fear was that he may not live long enough to see the 1974 season. As bleak as that statement was, Hank Aaron had a pretty good reason to be concerned for his safety. Since the home run chase began, Aaron had been receiving massive amounts of fan mail and a tremendous amount of hate mail as well. Some in the baseball world felt that Babe Ruth's record of 714 career home runs was a sacrosanct record that should never be broken due to Ruth's stature as arguably baseball's most famous and iconic player, while others' reasons were simply flat out racist from those who didn't want to see a black man break a white man's record. It got so bad that even newspapers and TV stations who were covering the chase were also sent racist hate mail because of the praise that they gave Hank Aaron. However, there were many who were thrilled to see such an historic record about to be broken. Even Babe Ruth's widow, Claire Hodgson, said that her husband would have enthusiastically cheered on Hank Aaron while she publicly denounced the hate mail and racist slurs that Aaron was receiving. Because of all the attention that Hank Aaron got, he even received a plaque from the United States Postal Service for receiving nearly 1 million pieces of mail, more than any other person with the exception of politicians. The Braves opened up the 1974 season on the road against the Reds. Concerned that Aaron might break the record away from Atlanta, the Braves management decided that they were going to sit Aaron out for the first series. This caused somewhat of a controversy as Major League Baseball's commissioner at the time, Bowie Kewen, stepped in and ruled that Aaron had to play two games of the three-game series. On his first at bat against the Reds on April 4, 1974, Hank Aaron tied Babe Ruth's record of 714 career home runs. However, Aaron wouldn't hit another for the rest of the series. The Braves then returned home on April 8th for a series against the Los Angeles Dodgers. The Dodgers would turn out to be a fitting opponent as Hank Aaron grew up a Dodger fan, idolizing Jackie Robinson, so much so that he once skipped school to hear Jackie Robinson speak. 
As for the upcoming series, with all the hype surrounding the record chase, the first game was nationally televised on NBC with a record crowd of 53,775 in attendance. Prior to the game, Aaron was quoted saying, I owe the fans of Atlanta a shot at 715. If I get a chance to hit it out of the ballpark, I'm going to try to dispose of it. In the bottom of the fourth inning, with the Dodgers leading 3-1, Braves third baseman Daryl Evans reached first base on an error by Bill Russell. Hank Aaron would come up next to bat against Dodger pitcher Al Downing, who had previously walked Aaron on five pitches in the first inning. On the second pitch, Aaron crushed the ball over the left field wall into the Braves' bullpen area, where relief pitcher Tom House caught the ball. As Aaron was circling the bases, two 17-year-old kids ran onto the field and congratulated Aaron. You'd think there would be better security for a guy facing that many death threats, right? As Aaron came home, he was surrounded by his teammates, while a young reporter named Craig Sager, who would later become well known for his colorful reporting during NBA games, was the first to interview Aaron during the celebration. The game was then paused for 11 minutes to recognize Aaron's incredible achievement. President Richard Nixon even tried to call Hank Aaron while he was on the field, but he was obviously busy. The two would later connect, with Nixon inviting Hank Aaron to the White House for a celebratory dinner. However, they would never get to meet up, as by this point in Nixon's presidency, he was pretty deep in the Watergate scandal, causing him to resign just a few months later. Another president, well, future president, Jimmy Carter, who was then the governor of Georgia, was also on hand to congratulate Aaron. Aaron would finish the 1974 season with 20 home runs for that year, hitting his 733rd career home run on the last day of the season on October 2nd. This would turn out to be his last home run as an Atlanta Brave player, as he was traded to the Milwaukee Brewers during the offseason. At this point, Aaron's career had come full circle, returning back to Milwaukee after having begun his career there with the Braves before they moved in 1966. And because Hank Aaron was at the end of his career, playing with the Brewers, who were at the time part of the American League, meant that Aaron could be used as a designated hitter rather than having to play in the field every day. Hank Aaron wasn't done breaking records just yet, as he had his sights on another one of Babe Ruth's records. On May 1st, 1975, Aaron broke the all-time runs batted in record previously held by Ruth, recording his 2,214th RBI. Aaron was also selected to his final All-Star game in 1975, having been selected a record 25 times throughout his 23-year career. And you may be wondering, how can you have 25 All-Star game appearances in 23 years? Well, between 1959 and 1962, MLB actually held two All-Star games per season where Hank Aaron was selected to both. He would go on to hit another 22 home runs over the next two years during the 1975 and 76 seasons. Aaron hit his last career home run, number 755, on July 20th, 1976 at Milwaukee County Stadium in a game against the California Angels. After that season, Aaron officially retired and returned back to Atlanta to join the Braves front office as a team executive. Six years later, on August 1, 1982, Hank Aaron was inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York, when he received 97.8% of the votes, only second at the time behind Ty Cobb, who had received 98.2% of the votes. Hank Aaron's career home run record would stand for over 30 years, but would fall on August 7, 2007, when Barry Bonds of the San Francisco Giants hit his 756th career home run. Bonds became the new career home run king, while also holding on to the single season record for home runs, which he set a few years prior in 2001. However, this time around, the overall mood and excitement around the home run chase was much different. For many years, Bonds had been dogged by allegations of steroid use and performance enhancing drugs, which were banned substances throughout Major League Baseball. Though he initially denied those accusations, Bonds would later claim that his trainer may have given him steroids unbeknownst to him. Sure, Jan. Nonetheless, the atmosphere around the chase was much more subdued and less celebratory than Hank Aaron's record-breaking moment. In fact, neither the commissioner of baseball at the time, Bud Selig, or Hank Aaron himself were even on hand in person to congratulate Bonds. Although Aaron did send in a video congratulating Barry Bonds on his achievement. I would like to offer my congratulations to Barry Bonds on becoming baseball's career home run leader. It is a great accomplishment, which requires skill, longevity, and determination. Throughout the past century, the home run has held a special place in baseball, and I have been privileged to hold this record for 33 of those years. I move over now and offer my best wishes to Barry and his family on this historical achievement. My hope today, as it was on that April evening 
in 1974 is that the achievement of this record will inspire others to chase their own dreams. Hank Aaron later stated that his absence was not because he felt that Bond's record was tainted, but because he felt that the game of baseball shouldn't be about breaking records, but simply about playing to one's best potential. In the following years, he remained a constant presence at Atlanta Braves games and continued to live near the Atlanta area up until his death in early 2021 when he passed away at the age of 86, just two weeks before his 87th birthday. As part of his funeral procession, Hank Aaron was taken back to a familiar place one last time. The only remaining piece of the old Fulton County Stadium where the Braves used to play is a part of the left field wall where Hank Aaron hit number 715 over it, a fitting last tribute to one of the greatest players to ever play the game. So what did you guys think about Hank Aaron breaking Babe Ruth's career home run record? And what did you think about Barry Bonds eventually breaking Hank Aaron's record? Let me know in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button and feel free to share this video with anyone else who might also enjoy it. For more sports history, check out my website at allsportshistory.com and be sure to follow my social media pages, which I posted the links to in the description below. And thanks for watching.